With Japan's deep and fascinating culture, it's no surprise that foreigners can sometimes unintentionally cross boundaries that make the locals feel uncomfortable. In this video, we'll explore seven of the most surprising ways foreigners make Japanese people uncomfortable. From basic manners to cultural faux pas. We'll also touch on the reasons why Japanese find these actions uncomfortable. But wait, there's more. As a bonus, we'll give you some handy tips on how to get past the unique challenges of being a foreigner in Japan later on in the video. So whether you're a seasoned expat or a curious traveler, sit back, relax, and get ready to learn something new about being a pleasant gaikokujin, or a person from another country in Japan. Welcome to our channel, where we share with you all of the amazing places on this planet. If you're new here, we trust you're going to love this video. And if you're a subscriber, thanks for coming back. Without further ado, here we go. Now, before we get started, you should know that the frequently heard term gaijin is sometimes used in Japan to refer to foreigners, but may have a negative connotation. Some people might find it offensive, so if you're in doubt, it's better to use gaikokujin instead. Diving right in, one common behavior that can cause unease for the Japanese is speaking loudly in public places. In Japan, people tend to be quite reserved and prefer to keep their voices down in public. So when foreigners talk loudly, it can be jarring for the people around them. Now we know that it's easy to get carried away when you're chatting with friends or family, but in Japan, it's important to keep your voice down, especially when you're on a train or a bus. The Japanese value harmony and tranquility in public spaces, and loud talking or making too much noise can disrupt this balance. In fact, many Japanese commuters use their daily commute as a time to relax, read a book or listen to music, and speaking loudly can ruin this peaceful experience. Of course, this doesn't mean you can't talk at all, but it's best to keep your voice low and avoid causing any unnecessary disturbance. Another behavior that can make Japanese people uncomfortable is standing too close to them. Understand that personal space is a big deal in Japan. It's considered rude to invade someone's personal space, especially if you're a stranger. So when you're out and about in Japan, it's best to err on the side of caution and give people a little bit of breathing room. Additionally, some foreigners might inadvertently touch Japanese people without realizing it. For example, if a foreigner is used to hugging or patting someone on the back as a way of expressing affection, they might do so without realizing that it's not a common practice in Japan. That's not to say that Japanese people never get close to each other. When you're riding on a crowded train or walking through a busy street, it's inevitable that you're going to be in close proximity to others. But even in these situations, people try to respect each other's personal space as much as possible. One way that Japanese people show respect for personal space is through bowing. When you bow to someone, you're acknowledging their presence without getting too close. It's a great way to show respect and avoid invading someone's personal space. Next up is the issue of strong fragrances. We all know that perfume or cologne can make us feel confident and attractive, but in Japan, it's a different story. The concept of wabi-sabi in the country is very important. It's all about finding beauty in imperfection, simplicity, and understated elegance. So when it comes to fragrances, Japanese people prefer subtle scents that don't overpower their surroundings. You see, in Japan, it's considered impolite to draw too much attention to yourself. So when you wear a strong fragrance, it can make others around you feel uncomfortable, almost like you're invading their personal space. This preference for subtle fragrances even extends to things like tea ceremonies, where the fragrance of the tea is an important part of the experience. You wouldn't want a strong scent to overpower the delicate aroma of the tea, now would you? So, when you're in Japan, it's best to go easy on the perfume or skip it altogether. And who knows, maybe you'll even come to appreciate the beauty of a more subtle scent. After all, there's something to be said for the elegance of a fragrance that doesn't scream for attention. Before we move on to the next point, if you're enjoying this video so far, please hit that like button and subscribe for more content like this. It would really help our small channel grow so we can make even more videos for you. Another thing that can make the Japanese people uncomfortable is smoking outside of designated areas. In Japan, smoking is not banned, but it is heavily regulated. There are designated areas where smoking is permitted, such as smoking rooms in airports and train stations and some places on the street. However, smoking outside of these areas can be seen as a breach of etiquette and can make Japanese people uncomfortable. For one thing, Japan has a high population density, which means that people are often in close proximity to each other. This makes it important to be considerate of others and to avoid doing anything that could negatively impact those around you. So, if you're a smoker, be sure to look out for signs indicating where you can light up and be respectful of those around you. For number five, we have the issue of littering. Japan is a famously clean and tidy country, and littering is seen as a major social faux pas. 
Cleanliness is a way of life in Japan. It's not just about keeping things tidy, it's also about showing respect for the environment and the people around you. In fact, it's not uncommon to see Japanese people picking up litter, even if it's not their own. It's all about taking responsibility and doing your part to keep things clean. So if you're in Japan, be sure to dispose of your trash properly and avoid leaving a mess behind. Next is the classic mistake of asking direct or personal questions. In Japan, it's considered impolite to pry into someone's personal life, especially if you've just met them. Understand that Japanese people tend to be more reserved than people from other cultures. This means that they may not be as forthcoming with personal information as you might be used to. But this doesn't mean that they're not interested in you, it just means that they may need a little more time to warm up to you and feel comfortable sharing more personal details. So, instead of asking direct or personal questions right off the bat, try starting with some more general topics. For example, you could ask about their favorite food, their hobbies, or their favorite places to visit in Japan. This will help to break the ice and get the conversation flowing. Asking direct or personal questions can make Japanese people uncomfortable, but it doesn't have to be a deal breaker. By being mindful of cultural differences and focusing on positive topics, you can have fun and engaging conversations with Japanese people without causing any offense. Finally, some foreigners might make Japanese people uncomfortable by not following social norms. For example, it's common to take off your shoes when entering someone's home or a traditional Japanese restaurant. If a foreigner doesn't do this, it can be seen as disrespectful. So, those are just some of the ways we as foreigners can sometimes make Japanese people uncomfortable. But remember, these are only generalizations and not all Japanese people will feel the same way. Now, as promised, let's move on to the bonus content about how to get past the unique challenges of being a foreigner in Japan. Here are a few things you can do to avoid making Japanese people uncomfortable. First, try to be mindful of your surroundings and adjust your behavior accordingly. Speak softly in public places, respect people's personal space, and be aware of cultural differences. Next, try to learn about Japanese customs and social norms before visiting Japan. This can help you avoid accidentally offending someone or making them feel uncomfortable. And finally, if you do make a mistake or accidentally offend someone, apologize and try to make amends. Japanese people are generally very forgiving and a sincere apology can go a long way. So there you have it, folks. We hope you enjoyed the ride. And if you did, make sure to smash that like button. Hit subscribe and turn on notifications to stay up to date on our latest content. Thanks for tuning in and we'll see you in the next one.